Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and today I'm going to show you just a few of the highlights of the Construct 3 release 432. Let's dive in. Now first up we've got some improvements for Remote Preview. So just a really quick reminder of how Remote Preview works. It gives you a, a QR code or a URL to visit and uh, you can put that into a different browser or device and instantly try your game um, remotely. So this can be a different browser, a different device, a mobile device, anything. Uh, so that's a, a great way to test your project on different devices. So now what's new about Remote Preview? Previously this was a dialogue and it could sometimes get in the way but you'll notice now as I drag it the docking indicators appear and this is because you can now dock uh, the pane. So for example you can stick Remote Preview down in the corner here and then you can carry on working on your project with it out the way so it won't stop you from editing the rest of your project. So that's a really handy feature for uh, making better use of Remote Preview. Um, it makes it much easier to manage long running uh, Remote Preview sessions. You'll also notice that as it resizes narrower it's got a sort of responsive layout to make better use of a narrow display area. So for example you can dock it over to a bar here and it'll look a bit neater without so much information taking up the space. Okay, moving on. Next up, uh, we've got some improvements for the tile map editing in Construct. These include a new tile map patch brush. So here's one I made earlier. Um, this is a simple tile map project I've um, uh, got set up, and I've already added a tile map patch brush. So if I open the editor that comes in the tile map bar now, uh, this is the tile map brush editor, and uh, you can see I've just made a little patch like this, um, a sort of square pond, uh, and now you can use the patch brush to stamp this out. Um, so I can now easily place that design in a few different places. And you can create multiple patch brushes and easily uh, switch between them to easily stamp out different designs into your tile map. Moving on, next up we've got some improvements for flowcharts. Uh, if you remember, flowcharts are a great way of uh, managing um, states such as uh, your progress through a questionnaire or a, a quest where there are um, different conversation trees to follow. So here's just the simple questionnaire flowcharts example and here uh, here's a node um, and two of the new features we've got for flowcharts is you can uh, set a um, an output to be the default. So this gives you a way to choose which output to follow if you just want to go to the next node. If you have multiple outputs you can select one to be the default and then it gives you an option to move through nodes without having to specify an output. Another option is you can now disable outputs. So this lets you easily try out changes to your flowcharts without having to actually destructively edit them. So you don't have to remove this output here to try your flowchart without that output. You can merely disable it and then later on re-enable it. So these give you some new options to more easily edit your flowcharts, try out changes and also some new capabilities to move through flowcharts using the default output. Okay, next up, if you use coding in Construct with our JavaScript coding feature, then we've got a really great update for you. Um, I'll just open the Spellcaster coding example to show this off. So in this release, we've done a big upgrade for Construct's built-in coding editor. So previously we used an um, editor called CodeMirror. We've now upgraded it to use a, a whole new code editor based on the one which comes with Visual Studio Code called Monaco. So you might notice some changes uh, right away. Uh, this is the new code editor appearing in the middle here. Uh, first up, you'll see there's a code minimap on the right here. So this is a great way to um, get a summary of uh, a longer code file. Uh, and as I scroll down, you also notice at the top here, um, it's got a header with sticky information about which class you're in, uh, which method you're in. So as you scroll through the file, you can always see what context you're working in. So for example, as I scroll down here, I can still see that this is the move function inside the goblin instance class. The minimap has some uh, useful extra features as well. For example, I can write a comment saying mark and uh, annotate 
this uh, function here and now you'll see in the minimap here that appears as a larger piece of text uh, as a sort of marker in the minimap and again if you have a long code file this is a great way to add annotations and help you scroll quickly through the file. Another sort of related feature to that is you can use region comments so I can uh, create a region at the top called uh, imports um, and then I'll mark the end of the region with the end region comment and now this also appears in the minimap here and it automatically becomes a collapsible section of code. So again this is a, a great um, code editing feature to help you manage uh, different sections of code and clear out the way things that you're not wanting to look at when you're writing some code. There's lots more features. Um, if you uh, right click on some code, for example, here's a global variable called goblin speed. Uh, I can do peak definition and this will just show an inline window which shows the um, globals uh, script here. That's where it's uh, declared in its context. Uh, you can also do go to definition and it will open that file with the cursor at the declaration. Um, other tools include um, find references so you can get a summary of everywhere that variable is used uh, throughout your project. Uh, for example, it's used in this file here. Um, and you can also use um, rename so that will go through the list of all references and automatically change the name of it for you. And other tools like the command palette as well. So the command palette is a feature of Monaco where it's just got a long list of all the tools available for your code editing. So there's a whole range of things to check out there. So it's a really powerful code editor and uh, it will do all the usual features that it did previously such as autocomplete and find and replace and so on. When you use uh, code in uh, event sheets, it will also use the Monaco editor and it will similarly have the same range of uh, benefits. Um, for example, as I type here, this is using the Monaco code editor as well uh, for writing a script block in an event sheet. Although due to the constrained editing space there, you'll notice some features have been taken away, such as the minimap scrolling on the right, uh, just to avoid them all getting in the way with a small amount of space there. Okay, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. As ever, if you go to the example browser and uh, filter by new, we've got some new examples for you, including a great new demo game called Avalanche. It's a sort of retro 3D um, adventure game. Uh, some new examples such as bowling using JavaScript coding and uh, a few others. Here's a nice one, Hero Attributes. This is also using JavaScript coding, and this is a nice little application of mesh distortion to show a sort of spider chart of the attributes of different characters with a nice bit of tweening between them. So check those out. And uh, as ever, there's loads more improvements and additions and optimizations. So check out the full release notes and all the notes of all the intervening releases since the last stable release for the full details. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy using Construct.